Hank here with my thoughts on Movo's Phantom Audio Interface. Full disclosure, I reached out to Movo when I found out about the Phantom and asked them if I could review it. So they did send me this particular unit. When your Phantom Audio Interface arrives inside the box, you get one USB-C to USB-C cable. You get two USB-C to USB-A cables. You also get two 6.35 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter adapters. And of course, the user manual. The suggested retail price for the Phantom by Movo is $149.95 US dollars. On the specs front, it's a two in four out, which is four quarter inch outputs. You have a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sample rate of 192 kilohertz, and when I plug it into my computer, it says it is 24 bit. The microphone input dynamic range is 110 dB A weighted, and it is 110.5 dB A weighted for line input. The unit has a stellar EIN listing of minus 128 dBU A weighted. And you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think the theoretical limit is minus 129.6 dBU A weighted. The audio interface gives you a gain range of 50 dB for mic and 30 dB for line input. And of course it provides 48 volts phantom power. Build quality wise, the mobile phantom feels well constructed. The knobs are rock solid with the exception of the monitor out knob. The rubber input selection buttons are lively and extremely responsive. Even the backlight buttons are as springy as buttons get. The rubber feet on the bottom of the Phantom essentially glue this unit to my slippery, cheap wooden desktop. The accent lighting adds a flare to the unit that sets the design over the top for me. You know an RGB light guy is gonna RGB, right? Speaking of the lighting, you have 22 options. So seven different colors with three levels of intensity plus the capability to just turn it off. Let's talk about the layout of the device. On the front of the unit, we have two combo jacks with volume knobs, 48 volt phantom power buttons, and mic slash line input buttons. Next, we have the coup de gras, the USB-C mix minus enabled cell phone port with volume knob. Then we have the monitor out knob, along with a light for USB connectivity and monitor out selection buttons. Finally, there's the quarter inch headphone jack, volume knob and direct monitor button. On the back, we have a USB-C power port and then a USB-C computer port for connectivity, for streaming and recording. And then the on off and color intensity changing buttons. And lastly, four, quarter inch monitor outputs at 50 dB of gain. That's pushing it. So let's see if it can drive the Shure SM7B. All right, now I'm back on the Shure SM7B. This is where I would want to set it so I don't get that added preamp noise at the very end when you step from nine-ish to 10, just like any audio interface you're going to get. The noise increases exponentially. So this is as high as I can go before it starts getting a little more noisy. So I'll go up. So see, now I'm getting much louder, but it is also adding some noise to the signal. So can you drive the Shure SM7B? Of course you can. Does it sound ideal? No. All right, back on the Movo UM6, it's got the internal gain boost. So it is easily able to be used with this interface and any interface that provides 48 volts phantom power. So I think it's kind of a smart selling point for Mobo to pair these together just so you never would have to think about could you drive a Shure SM7B? You could, but it does not sound ideal in my opinion. Or you could pair this audio interface with any condenser microphone and you're going to sound fantastic. But you definitely don't want to step past nine on the gain dial. When it comes to headphone output, let's see if we can drive these high impedance cost headphones. For direct monitoring, I can hear myself back perfectly clear. I am not maxed out. Uh, I will max it out in my own headphones. 
for direct monitoring maxed out now and it's loud and clear it is not the loudest headphone output i've heard for these high impedance headphones but it's definitely sufficient for doing that so yes it can drive these high impedance headphones just fine the dual monitor outputs function as you would expect i know there are a lot of musicians out there that have different sounding monitors and they want to hear what a mix sounds like on different pairs to try to get the mix they can i don't have two monitor uh, pairs but the ones i do have sound just fine being pushed by this device when it comes to pros and cons the movo phantom i like the preamps just fine until you get to that stepping issue at nine to ten that's going to be on just about any interface that you deal with even some of the my favorites of all time have that stepping issue where you go from 9 to 10 and it starts getting very noisy. Next, I would say the build quality is top notch. I've had this for a while now and I have been impressed anytime I have to lift it for something to move it or anything. I've been impressed with the heft of it and the construction of the knobs with one exception. Having the cell phone port on the unit that you know if you're a follower of this channel that is one of my must-haves i need that versatility and so i'm really happy that they've included this i hope other companies going forward will really look into that and make that a priority because it just adds so much flexibility for adding music or sound effects or sound pad apps that you can get in the app stores as i stated a little earlier the ability to connect two monitor pairs and get your mix just right if you're a musician, that is much appreciated for the musically inclined, which I am not. I don't always take it for granted that you're going to be able to direct monitor your signal. Thankfully, Movo thought about that and they have the little button on there where you can do direct monitoring because I have to hear my own voice back. I have to be monitoring that as much as possible. The device's weight combined with those rubber feet literally pin this device to my desk. You know, when you use lighter audio interfaces, sometimes the cords can move the unit around. The accent lighting, I think, is a nice touch. Obviously, I'm going to say that because over the years I've been RGB guy, as they've called me in the chat. But the accent light, I think it's just a cool touch for the gamers and live streamers that are into that. Speaking of lighting, around the gain knobs, there is almost like a volume meter. So as you talk, it goes up. That is a really good touch. When it comes to cons, I do wish this audio interface would push more gain. It's not a big deal, as I said, when you pair it with their own UM6 microphone, which has that built-in 20 dB of gain, which I think is their marketing play. Uh, and it's a smart one. Pair it with that and you don't have to worry about it. However, for the Shure SM7B, I would say it almost excludes that microphone. It makes the Shure SM7B unusable unless you were pairing that with a cloud lifter. But at that price point, you'd probably be doing something different. Where's red in the accent lighting? That I found it to be really odd because you would have all the main primary colors. I would feel like you would anyway, but there's no red. Red, green, blue are staples in lighting. Another con that I'm always going to mention on audio interfaces is where's the mute button? Give me a doggone mute button already. It's frustrating that it seems like no manufacturer wants to put that work in and make a mute button on an audio interface. So when you see one, it's outstanding, but on this, you don't have it. So that's a little disappointing. With the lighting, you can track back to where you were easily. You know, turn the volume all the way down, track back to where you were pretty easily. You don't want to have to think about that. You just want to come over and push mute. What makes it even more frustrating is that the monitor out button functions as a mute button when you push it in. So why not just extend that functionality to the two inputs? Speaking of the monitor out knob, it has a lot of play in it. With this unit, much like the PreSonus ES2, you have to have it powered in addition to connecting it to your PC. So make sure you're aware of that. That's not a con. 
that's just an observation that some audio interfaces require that because they're pushing a lot and they need that extra power that they can't draw from your computer most times. Overall, if I had a mute button, I could forgive all my other little nitpicks, but no mute button on this. However, I think that the Phantom by Movo is really well thought out. I'm pretty impressed with the lengths they went to make this function for many different types of content creators. The preamps are quite good until you get to that 9, 10 stepping situation that I've talked about repeatedly during this video. But I think the preamps are super clean. Even when I turn self-monitoring up all the way up, listening to myself back, you know, as, as loud as I possibly can, I don't hear that underlying static or, or what have you coming from the preamp. If mobile will simply address the gain, you know, the next time around, give us, give us more gain and that wobbly knob for the monitor out, dr address those two things. And if, it, and if they wanted to include a mute button, that would set this over the top. However, it's still a very formidable audio interface, especially at the $150 price point and below. So thanks again to Movo for sending this one over. As always, thank you.